Do you like me? Just like me. Like Me TV Fresno on Facebook. Get the latest news, interact with others, watch videos, become a fan of me. Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV. Hello, I'm John Malos, and welcome to this special edition of Connect With Me on the Me TV Network. Today, a special guest. Her name is Kathy Garver. Do you remember her? She played in Family Affair. My conversation with Kathy Garver in just a moment. I want to take you back in a time capsule now in television history and talk to you about a television program called Family Affair. Do you remember that program? It starred Brian Keith. He actually played Bill Davis on the program. Well, Bill Davis had a niece on the program called Sissy Davis. That part was played by Kathy Garver. Do you remember Kathy Garver, a big star in television many, many years ago? Well, you know what? Kathy Garver was in Fresno on September the 8th for a charity event at the Fresno Armenian Home. It was called Reach for the Stars, and there were many television stars there that night from yesteryear. It was all organized by Ron Mortanian of Fresno, who, by the way, was a guest on this program, well, once, twice, three times, I can't remember, but Ron's a good friend of this program. Now, remember, Kathy Garver also played in one of the biggest movies in history. She was actually a slave on the movie Ten Commandments. And right now, Kathy Garver lives in the Bay Area, and she's the host of a program called Backstage with Barry and Kathy. Well, we're not going to get into that right now. We're actually going to talk to Kathy Garver about her role on Family Affair, starring Brian Keith. She played the niece. Here is my interview with Kathy Garver from September the 8th. Okay, we're here with the one and only, the absolutely beautiful Kathy Garver. Welcome to Connect With Me on Me TV Fresno. Well, thank you very much, John. Very happy to be here. I'm looking at uh, your postcard here, and I'm, I was um, just amazed at all the programs that, you, that you've been in. But one of the first ones, not the very first, but one of the first ones you were telling me beforehand, you were in the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Please, I'm dying to know. Tell me about that. <laughs> yes, because it wasn't the silent version, and it was the one with Charlton Heston. The real one. The, yes, the, the real one, the, where we really talked. And... Uh, I was hired as an extra, and we were at Paramount Studios, and I was to be in this rickety wagon, and to go down the dirt-laden street, and there was a blanket over me, and all of a sudden, I hear this voice say, don't let that little girl's face get in the camera. And I said, gee, what did I do? And I thought, is that God? <laughs> you know, he's coming way up high. And so... We did the scene, cut, and the associate producer came and lifted me gently off the wagon, and we walked over, and this cr big crane with a person on descended, and it was God, kind of, that was Cecil B. DeMille. So I walked over, and we started chatting, and he wrote scenes into the movie for me. And it was kind you of... You mean as the, movie was, as the movie was in progression, as it was being shot? Exactly, and it was part of DeMille's, it was part of DeMille's skills um, when he was doing these great big epic movies to make them accessible to the audiences so he would have more of an emotional time. So he wrote the scenes and my name was Rachel the Slave Girl. So during the Exodus scene, if you will watch this movie every Easter it's shown, or you can always get it on DVD, and pretty soon MeTV might have some more memorable entertainment in the guise of film. So in the Exodus, I'm coming down the stairs and I say, where's the pumpkin? And then I said, where's Rebecca? And a disembodied hand comes out and says, here's Rebecca. And Rebecca is a little doll. And so I take the doll, the camera follows me over to the water fountain. And then the next scene, we're on the paper mache mountain and the Red Sea is closing. And uh, I'm there cuddling Rebecca. And 
Charlton Heston comes up and he says, are you afraid? And I said, no, but Rebecca is. <laughs> and so he lifts me off the paper mache mountain and we go finish our right, uh, Tell me the secret. How did they make it look like the Red Sea parted? I want to know the secret to that. Jello. <laughs> yeah, it's true, Jello. Really? And they had um, all the horsemen they made in miniature and they made like a model of the the uh, the dirt and then that squiggly stuff was jello and you look at that movie today and with all of our green screens and fabulous effects and this and that mm -hmm. and it is very believable I sure believed it when yeah. I was doing it but it really holds uh, forth with the test yeah, you see all those young men in the chariots floating underwater after the sea goes back to normal that was jello yeah that yeah was jello, jello. Yeah. Yeah. that reminds me of Lucy when she had the the show he said and it was sponsored by Jello, he said, "Jello, everybody, <laughs> welcome to the show." Okay, but that's Lucy. Well, but you're, but you're most well known, I think, for Family Affair. Would you not agree? I would agree, especially when I'm doing a Me TV interview. I yes. certainly have watched those classes because yes. sometimes they can I poke am, you in the I eye. Am, I almost did that. Yes. But, but how did you get the part in Family Affair? You were telling me earlier, very interesting. You were playing in another show. Well, actually, I was at UCLA, and uh, it was my second year, and usually the producers, they like to cast kids that are look smaller. If you will look at all the wonderful child stars that are at this wonderful Armenia event, uh, you will see that nobody's over five foot six. All the guys are like five, 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 four. Eddie Mecca's five, three. I'm five feet tall. So, uh, they, I was already 18, and that's another plus when casting, hopefully a show that's going to run for a long time. So um, they had cast everyone. Brian Keith was cast as Uncle Bill, and Sebastian Cabot was um, Mr. French, and these adorable, they weren't really twins, Buffy and Jody. And they had cast a girl to play the last remaining part of Sissy, but she had gone to Europe and gained some weight, and that made them a little nervous. They were already shooting the pilot, and so I got a call from my agent, Hazel. But you were playing in Valley Days at the time, right? Oh, Death Valley Days. I had Death Valley Days. Death Valley Days I had done with June Lockhart, and I had played Isadora Duncan, and at that time I was 18, and I was playing a 12-year-old. <laughs> And I guess it was very believable. I used to go up to Mammoth Mountain. And in college at UCLA, go up to Mammoth. That's where Lee Aker is from. And I had all these bundles. But I would buy a child's ticket. Never said a word. So I, I looked young. Right now, I'm only 39. You believe that, don't you, John? I thought you were 29. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but the thing for Family Affair, everyone was, everybody had blonde hair. Now, at that time, I had darker colored hair. Hard for you to believe, but I did. They were looking for a blonde, blue-eyed girl. So here I am with my dark hair, dark eye, just having played Rachel in Ten Commandments as a slave. Um, and uh, so it was a little panic time. I called my mom from the sorority. Mom, they want this blonde girl. She had the salute, well, rather the can, a can of streaks and tips, which was a step where you spray on your hair and it instantly lightens it. Well, it didn't quite instantly, and so she sprang and sprang. Then I look like something out of Goldfinger. You go like this, and it was like this helmet. So I go over to the uh, producer and creator and writer of the series, Edmund Hartman, who is fabulous. We're chatting just like this. He says, what's wrong with your hair? I said, my hair? He says, yes, it's turning green. <laughs> I said, oh, you're not doing the remake of the boy with green hair. No, we're not. But it broke the ice. That was fine. They looked at the Death Valley Day footage to see that I could play younger. And that helped you get the part? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. Because they, they like to look at things you've done before. I went onto the set. They were already shooting the pilot. And uh, so I chatted with the director, and the next day my agent called the sorority. All the sorority girls said, "Well, well, what happened? What happened?" And they said, "Well, uh, you got the part, but you know 
you're going to wear a wig. I said, okay. Yeah, so you wore a wig. Yes, but that the wig got canned after the first uh, episode, and then they Bef just dyed my hair. Before we move on, of course, we want to talk about Family Affair and some of the characters on there, but in Death Valley days, you had a little Ronald Reagan story in 20 Mule Team Borax. I remember those. Oh, yes. I mean, that was the whole premise of Death Valley days. Right. You would have this wonderful narrator, and Ronald Reagan was the narrator, mm -hmm. and with the, you know, 40 Mule Team Borax you know, traipsing across the wilderness. And it was really wonderful to even hark, you know, you think about those days now and, and harken back to them. That was, I, I've done a lot of radio. And when I was younger, I was going to do Whispering Streets, which was a fabulous anthology program. And Betty Davis was the narrator. So my mom, again, we go to CBS radio in Hollywood. And I'm very anxious to see Betty Davis. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So I dress up very nice for my radio show. And I said, OK, where's Betty Davis? Well, she's not here. She does her part in New York. You you know, this is an anthology series. You're just doing your story. So I never saw Betty Davis. What a letdown. But I did meet Ronald Reagan, so there was a lift up. You know, to be honest with you, no matter what Kathy Garver does in life, I mean, from this point on, she will forever be associated with that television show called Family Affair that was starring Brian Keith, and she played his niece on The Sun. It ran for many, many years, and of course, uh, Sebastian Cabot was on that show, you might recall as well. A very popular role for her. We're going to continue our interview with Kathy Garver right here on Connect With Me in one momento. Don't go away. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified, ready, steam equipped, high efficiency Frigidaire Affinity Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Frigidaire laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're working hard to be your place. Once upon a time, an actress, me, Kathy Garber, played one of the original Family Affair kids. Which one? Well, I wasn't you, and I wasn't you. I was your older sister, Sissy. What did she do? Well, you have to watch Family Affair to find out. What station? It's on me TV, silly. Sissy looks so grown up. Watch me on me. Me TV. It's been a long time. Sure has. On Family Affair. I forgot what day it is. Sunday at noon on me TV. Well, I sure appreciate you keeping an eye on her, Miss Hedrick. At least she gets kind of used to living in school. Oh, well, I'll get along fine here, Uncle Bill. It's a beautiful place to live. Sure, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, uh, if you have any problems, honey, just call me. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye, Miss Hedrick. Don't worry about your niece, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Goodbye. Uncle Bill? If you're busy this weekend, I'm sure I could arrange to stay here. Now look, sissy, it's bad enough having you away all week. I'm gonna drive up here on Friday and take you back with me, and then the two of us are gonna make a night of it, see? We're gonna have dinner at 21, and then we're gonna go see, what do you call it, that new musical? And afterwards, we're gonna go to a nightclub and see a good show. Now, you can sleep all you want on Saturday, okay? Uncle Bill, I've never been to a nightclub in my life. Come to think of it, I've never seen a musical. I don't even know what a 21 is. It's a restaurant. Strictly very dressy. I'm actually going to have to go back and watch the movie again, The Ten Commandments, to see if I can spot Kathy Garver playing a slave on that film, of course, a Charleston Heston uh, uh, starred in that film, The Ten Commandments. But she's better known, of course, for playing Sissy Davis on Family Affair, Kathy Garver. Our interview continues. Now let's go back to my interview with that one special Hollywood star. Tell me about the cast of Family Affair. Did, did you, I mean, was it on set, everybody got along, you were like a family, pretty much like what the show states, I mean, family affair, you guys were close or what? Well, you have to understand that when you work with somebody all day, you really don't want to hang out with them. 
after you know, you've been with them for eight days. You'd like to see your own family. There was a big difference in age between the children and myself. Brian had his own family. Sebastian had his family and Yvonne and, of course, Brian Keith looked like a tough guy, you know, tough guy. He was big, he broad-shouldered, nice guy. Oh, he was great. He was this big, big guy. But, you know, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you know what ladies love. He was a big, tough guy, but the heart of soul, very sensitive, loved kids. But if he didn't like anybody on that show, he let them know about it, like, right away. He was really? very down to earth. Yeah. And I think one reason the show was so good was because of Brian Keith's style as Uncle Bill versus Sebastian Cabot's style as Mr. French. Now, Sebastian would, you know, memorize every single word, line for line for line, and uh, even I mean, when Brian Keith didn't. Brian Keith. Well, what are we doing today? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so they came from two different styles of acting, but right. went went very it well. Worked. It, worked it worked very well for five years. It worked. That's why it's on Me TV. That's right. Well, hey, we're on Me TV right now. Yes, so, we are. so and you can connect to us. Yeah. So you, you're you're most recognized for Family Affair. What did it, what did it do for you personally and professionally that show? Well, um, personally. I was always very, hello, how are you? But then you kind of get inundated with, well, with people coming up to you. So I think I went through a, a thing where, oh, why are all these people saying hello to me and why do they want my autograph? And because they love you, they recognize you, they want to be close to you. But you don't know that at that time. Right. And then someone said, it's like you're giving them a gift. And I said, right. okay, that was good advice. So I said, okay, I can give something to you. Were you annoyed by it? No, no, I wasn't annoyed. I was frightened by it. Frightened, okay. And, it, you, you know, you're, you're young, in your 20s. I mean, I have a 21-year-old son, as old as I am, and uh, that I had very late in life, but he's adorable. Um, I saw your darling children, and I don't have my iPhone, which is the only way I can, can connect, speaking of connect, with, this, with him. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but you're young, and you don't know how to handle a lot of these emotional things. That's what happens to a lot of the kids, Anissa, Lindsay, land, etc. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> television is a different world today than it was back then. You know that. I mean, the childhood stars went through a different era, a different time. They were exposed to different things than the child stars of today. Would you not agree? I would not agree. Um, and one thing, there were only three channels then. So everybody saw My Three Sons in Family Affair in Rin Tin Tin. Now we have 584 channels, so it's dispersed. Uh, there is now more recognition in, you know, social networking and, and yeah, Facebook and Twitter and all of that. Back then, you didn't hear the child stars getting into drugs or into trouble with the law or into trouble of any kind, uh, for the most part. I'm not saying all the way down the line, but in this day and age, it seems like the child stars of today, they grow up and they get in trouble some way or another. That's because all those kids were under contract to the studios and they wouldn't let anything out. You don't know all of the things that, that happened, you know, in Harold Lloyd and this person and that person. And they, if, if some of the little kids were, uh, look at Judy Garland. I mean, she was taking pills and she was yeah. doing this. The studio didn't let any of that out. Now, because everybody is so exposed and everybody knows that, oh, Kathy Garber was wearing a pink poodle skirt and well, it looked a little heavy. And that's not me, it's my skirt. I have a little adrenaline on and that's you know this is not my my body these are my skirts so um, but you know everything about anybody now but I don't believe it because it's the same type of thing you take a very young person and you give them a lot of money and you give them a lot of success you give them a lot of publicity and uh, that has not changed that has not changed that's why I disagreed with you John it makes for a good interview how did television and being a, a star the way that you were, how did it shape your life? Very well. Um, <laughs> I almost said something political, how dare I, but... Go ahead. No, I, I've decided not to talk about politics or religion anymore. Just but take a step out on that limb. <laughs> no, I'd break it, baby. Uh, but I bought a house and it really kind of set me up for life because I invested my money and uh, I bought more real estate in California when it was booming and not going down and not being bankrupt. So you're set financially. You don't have to worry. Well, 
except I have a 21 year old son who just invited his 21 year old girlfriend to live with us and they got a puppy and now we have a bird and five fish and the mortgage just went up and so there and I live in California Northern California so yes one always has to worry yeah. But it shaped you in what way? A positive way, obviously, but in what, in, in specifically how? Um, in the fact that I found what I want to do in my life is to inspire others, to entertain others. That's a big part of, of who I am. I want people to, so you're, to... You're lucky because you got to do what you wanted to do and make money and make a living. But I didn't know if that was particularly what I wanted to do because I've been doing it all my life since I was seven years old and the Ten Commandments. Right. I've done pretty much everything on my bucket list. I. Uh, I wrote my book, uh, The Family Affair Cookbook. Now I'm almost done with my second one, Surviving Sissy, uh, My Life in Hollywood. I wanted to go to uh, the Tahiti. Unfortunately, I've done that. So I said, well, no, I better add a little bit more to this bucket list. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll kick the bucket. So now I'm going to produce and star in a film. And so I'm getting film funding uh, from different sources. And what I, kind of film? Um, inspirational, faith-based, family-friendly um, PG, G rated films. Okay. I think there's a paucity of those around today and there is a, a dearth. And so people I think are yearning. And you see everyone here at the Armenian uh, festival and they say, oh, I love the shows and people didn't yell and scream and insult each other and kill each other and, you know, slice off somebody's head. And So why do you think Me TV is so popular? For that very reason. They want some sensibility in their life. They want, some, you know, love is, is a pretty potent thing and it's yeah. not a kind of love that's going to be controlling or going to be awful or it's it's a loving kind of inspirational love hopefully yeah. and that's what one wants to impart um, you see our show and, and, and again was a classic show in in like literature terms it followed the classic it, here's here's the problem, here is working on the problem, here's the climax, here's the denouement. You see that all through literature from from when they st first started doing uh, writing books and it, people glom onto that. They know they can follow that structure. And of course, you've been watching the interview with Kathy Garber of Family Affairs. She'll forever be associated with that show. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it was a hit television show for many years. We're going to continue our conversation from the Fresno Armenian Home with Kathy Garber in a moment. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first room air conditioner. The first compact electric range. It means a history of innovations that give you the best results and make your home life better. And now we introduce our latest innovation in cooking, the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. And our latest innovation in cleaning, the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher. Its unique wash arm gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. Kathy Garver now living in the San Francisco Bay Area and has a show of her own, and it's called Backstage with Barry and Kathy. Well, we discussed many things on the night of September the 8th when she was here in Fresno, but mainly her television and movie career. Back to our interview with Kathy Garver. Everybody in life has regrets to a certain extent. Do you have any? You know what I probably should have done? I, I said in my head, okay, I don't want to be a star. I don't want all of this hassle and people hassling me and doing this and doing that. I want to be a working actress. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> I've been a working actress all my life. So I, I should have put something else as my goal, but I've been happy. I haven't, not, I haven't overdosed on drugs. I don't take drugs. I haven't died. been married for 31 years, have a great kid, and I'm still going and still loving being in Fresno and being on MeTV. You are very blessed. I'm looking at some of the shows that you've been on. Obviously, Family Affair. We already talked about that. The Princess Diaries, Sweet November, Family Secrets, The Trial of Old Drum, 
Spider-Man, the TV series, okay? Spider-Man and his amazing friends, shall I go on? Simon and Simon, and we already talked about Death Valley Days and Ronald Reagan and 20 Mule Team Borax. Uh, or was it the 40 Team Mule? Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the Patty Duke Show. You were on the Patty Duke Show. Talk about that. Tell me about that. Patty is a friend of mine, and uh, I did four or five of her shows. Uh, we're the same age, and uh, I have a talk show up in San Francisco with backstage with Barry and Kathy, Barry Barsamian, <laughs> strangely enough, who is Armenian. Um, I met him outside. Barry is fabulous. He's, he's just great. And... Uh, Patty was uh, up in San Francisco doing a Wicked, and she was playing Madam Morrible. And so we, I, I said, Patty, let's do an interview like this. And I said, I can't believe, here you are, you know, 60, in your 60s, you wear this big, heavy costume, these big, heavy hats. I said, how do you do it night after night? She looked at me and said, determination. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you got it. And so uh, she, she's fabulous. She's, uh, she's wonderful. So did you like being on the five episodes that you were with her? I always like to work. Yeah. Yeah. And she, um, she had been working as long as I had. And you get on a series and you want to go boom, 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 boom. Okay. A movie. Okay. Are they ever going to get this light in the right place? Are they ever going to get this microphone right? What Fussing with it. So you become very attuned to doing things very quickly. And Patty was very quick. Let's get this, let's get this, let's get that. I look at her and I see a very professional actress. Absolutely, and she was president of the Screen Actors Guild, so not only did that professionalism go into her acting career, it also manifested itself in, in the unions and, and uh, really standing up for the actors. Okay, tell me about what you're doing now in San Francisco. Expand on it a little bit if you can. Okay, I shall. <laughs> but I don't know, you know I don't talk very much. Um, I'm doing backstage with Barry and Kathy. I teach voiceover at Voice One Studios. I teach how to create characters. I uh, record an audio book a month. I'm uh, recording next week uh, Betty Hutton's story. And then uh, next month I'm going to record the audio book of Agnes Moorhead. I just did this fabulous, it was so cute, um, Odette, a goose from uh, Toulouse that was written by Earl Hamner who wrote all the Waltons and Spencer's Mountain, and he wrote this darling tale about this little goose that I, re uh, and I, I belong to a couple investment groups, the uh, Family Media Angels, and we bring projects to people who have money from Silicon Valley, and we put them together, and again, though, to produce inspirational kind of um, family-friendly movies, and there, there are a lot of people that want to see that happen now. Well, I thank you very much for being our guest. It was wonderful talking to you. And before we go, i got to mention, uh, you know, uh, uh, how is it that you went to lunch today with our producer, our Cachatorian, and Eddie Mecca? How did that work? How did that happen? We didn't know anything about that. Well, um, Mr. Martinian. Um, that would be Ron, Ron Martinian. For all, and our viewers know him because he's been a guest on my show. Oh, yes. And Ron, Ron is wonderful. And so he put all the actors that he had invited to the festival in one hotel. I was having lunch with my, my wonderful friend Barry and he, he overheard something and he says, is that Eddie Mecca? And I said, I, I don't know. I went and I said, hi Eddie, come and have, uh, come and have lunch with us. And then Ara showed up and uh, then we started this wonderful conversation. That's great. He's a great guy. He's our producer, of course, as you know. Yes, and uh, then I immediately texted uh, back to Chicago to MeTV, the, the president there, and I said, well, I just had lunch, and uh, he says, well, keep all those fans for MeTV going on. You put a good word in for us in Chicago? Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Kathy, it's very nice to see you. My pleasure in, uh, hang on a second, let me put this down. My pleasure in seeing you, and Thank thanks you. for being a guest. I appreciate it. Continued luck and success, and good health. Thank you, and you can buy my book, The Family Affair Cookbook, on Amazon or on my website. For how much? It's only $20, and that includes an autograph, so go to www.kathygarver.com and watch me TV. All right. That's going to do it for us on this day on Connect With Me. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. That's going to wrap up our interview with Kathy Garver of Family Affair. 
Be sure and try to catch the reruns, if you can, of Family Affairs, starring Brian Keith and, of course, Kathy Garver playing Sissy Davis. as She was Brian's niece on the program. Sebastian Cabot also was uh, in that show. Now, remember, Kathy Garver, if you get a chance, watch the Ten Commandments. See if you can spot her. She played one of the slaves on there. She also lives in the Bay Area, and you might be able to catch her show over there called Backstage with Barry and Kathy. I think I'm going to tune in when I visit the Bay Area the next time. That's going to do it for me. I'm John Mallos, the host of Connect With Me. You've been watching a special edition right here on the Me TV Network. More of me? Me? Go to MeTVFresno.com for schedules, information on your favorite shows, videos, pictures, and more. Go to MeTVFresno.com today. Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV.